How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge 5000 and we're going to talk more about the next few snowstorms that are expected to move through the United States and see if we could potentially see a major northeast snowstorm in the near future. So let's first take a look at the latest run of the European model and based on what's happening right now we do have plenty of convective activity going on right now over the southern midwest extending into the southeast as well as there's a decent amount of instability surrounding this center of circulation we do have a small area of cold air just behind this convective activity and of course just the east of this area the temperatures are very warm and that's pretty much just asking for plenty of lift to occur right over the southern midwest for plenty of convective activity to occur now moving forward with the forecast we do see that eventually this rain should move further northward and there should be a small narrow area of snow i was talking to you guys about this yesterday so in portions of wind um, of southern wisconsin and michigan you need to be aware of the possibility of anywhere between one to three inches of snowfall this should occur right around the friday afternoon friday night time frame for you guys for the chicago area i was talking about the possibility yesterday but it seems like that possibility is um slim as the computer models have really narrowed down the exact trajectory of this storm system now now, since we're only 24 to 48 hours out from this event approaching the Illinois area now we have a good idea of where the trajectory of this storm will go and it seems like this storm will move just to the north to be able to bring the stronger southerly winds to Chicago for Chicago to mainly experience a rain event from this storm system but that it won't be the case for southern Wisconsin and Michigan so like I said be prepared for anywhere between one to three inches of snowfall however this isn't the significant winter storm for northeast that i'm ne necessarily concerned about because there's going to be another low pressure system that's located that's going to come off the rocky mountain ranges by the time we approach this weekend and look at this jet stream dip um, we're seeing right around the western half of the united states it's pretty pronounced there's pl um, plenty of cold air right over the western half and this cool air mass is going to interact with this very with this air mass that's warmer than average right now over the southeast and more humid than normal and once the cold air interacts with that we're going to see another enhancement of convective activity by the time we approach a sunday time frame once the storm system heads towards the ohio river valley where we will see the rain showers increase by the time we approach early sunday and then we see a full-on pretty powerful low pressure system develop by the time we approach late sunday into early monday where we see the millibar pressure drop down to low 990s and we see very heavy snowfall throughout a large portion of the interior northeast now the good news is or potentially bad news if you're hoping for snow along the coastal northeast is that the european model is leaning a little bit more towards a trajectory further northward compared to yesterday because in yesterday's run the snowfall was impacting boston in a pretty significant way where boston was forecasted to receive anywhere between five to eight inches of snowfall from the storm system however in this scenario it seems like it's entirely a rain vet for boston maybe you do experience some snow flurries on the back side but it's suddenly a lot less significant compared to what we were seeing yesterday so if we were to see that trend continue then more likely than not this would impact bring the most um, impacts towards the interior northeast while the coastal northeast would entirely see a rain of a, um, out of this potentially heavy rain though so you need to be aware of the possibility of flooding and of course gusty winds will be associated with this storm as well so it won't just be the snow that's going to be uh that could be a significant impact with this storm system but it's but if you're hoping for snow right up along the coastal northeast um this definitely isn't a good scenario we're going to need to see if this keeps up um there's still time for the forecast uh um, get a little bit more certain um this 
um, uh, by the time this storm approaches the New England coast, it would be right around the Monday time frame, which is around four days from now. And a lot could change between now and four days. However, with the GFS model also bringing the snowfall a little bit further northward, mainly focusing on the interior northeast, even more northward than what the European model is stating, it seems like the chance is less likely the snow will be able to uh, move a little bit um, um, just south enough to the coastal northeast um there's still that possibility it could change but i wouldn't get your hopes that high just yet as it seems like the more the most likely scenario is that the snowfall will focus in more so on the interior northeast and it'll be a pretty heavy amount of snowfall for the interior northeast where you could see anywhere between 6 to 12 inches of snow however that might not be the only possibility you could see snowfall in the northeast where um we're also um we have also been keeping an eye on this clipper system just behind this storm system that uh, your, both the European model and the GFS model do agree will eventually move southward into the Ohio River Valley. And what happens beyond that point is definitely more uncertain. Taking a look at what the latest run of the European model is stating, we do see a decent amount of snowfall right over the Great Lakes, probably around an inch of snow at most. This isn't a heavy amount of snowfall. The, you see that the storm system isn't very strong. Its millibar pressure is in the high 1,000 um, um, 9 millibar range, which is definitely not a very powerful low pressure system, not powerful enough to bring a heavy amount of convective activity to bring up uh, to make the precipitation rate very heavy at times so it's made in um so if it were to be at this strength it would bring a light amount of snowfall for the most part over the great lakes but moving forward with the forecast we do see there is a pretty pronounced dip and this low pressure system is embedded within that jet stream dip and we do see the storm system really organizes by the time this moves off the coast where it's a pretty powerful storm system by this point however it seems like um, by the time this clipper system approaches the northeast the ridging is going to be too weak for this to move up the coast if this were to move up the co the east coast and we could be talking about a, a very very significant snowstorm for the northeast since that would not only force the storm um, force the precipitation to impact the northeast a little bit more if it were to take a track for northward but also that'll help the instability by enhancing the southerly flow for the warm air to entrain more of the cool air that's just the northwest of this storm system and that would create a pretty powerful nor'easter and potentially a pretty powerful snowstorm for millions of americans in northeast however it seems like both the european and gfs model are currently agreeing that the ridge will be a little bit too weak so we see this clipper system strengthen well off the coast of the northeast way too far out to bring much of any precipitation um when this storm system is at least at this strength um to the northeast and we see that it's just it just moves to the east a little bit too fast it needed to move it would need to move a little bit north um further northward for the impacts to be a little bit more significant for the northeast um but look at the forecast hour i'm going at this is around seven days out that's still plenty of time for the forecast to change and we have seen many forecasts completely um change drastically from now between seven days so maybe if the computer models detect a little bit more ridging by the time we approach the December 6th, December 7th time frame, maybe we could see a more significant winter storm from the Northeast that would bring heavy snowfall. But we're just going to need to wait and see. Right now, the European model isn't forecasting that to happen. And as of the latest um, GFS model run, the GFS model isn't forecasting it either. Although the GFS model in its prior runs was a little bit more 
um, lenient on bringing a more significant snowstorm to the northeast. So if we were to take a look back at that storm in the more long term future, we see that this storm system moves a little bit further northward and we see a decent amount of snowfall more simply right over the mid Atlantic states where West Virginia, southern Pennsylvania and Maryland and even portions of the Marva Peninsula and southern New Jersey do experience a decent snowstorm out of this. It isn't a significant snowstorm. It isn't um, it isn't just a powerful or major snowstorm, I'll say, but it's certainly enough to dump a few inches of snowfall right over some of the um, over some areas of the mid Atlantic. This was a prior run, but comparing it to the run that just released um, the 18 Z run, the GFS model has subsided on that forecast where um, if we were to look back at that same um, at that same clipper system, we see that this clipper system is a lot weaker and the, the GFS model is leaning more towards the storm system moving well off the coast to bring any significant snow to the northeast. We do see some snowfall right over Pittsburgh and portions of Maryland, but definitely a lot less significant. But still, um, although both of the computer models aren't forecasting a significant snowstorm out of this, again, seven days out and with the and with um, a pretty powerful jet stream dip that's expected right over this area, there's always that possibility, especially if we were to see a stronger ridge than anticipated force the storm a little bit further northward to enhance the instability and bring a little bit more precipitation right up along the coast. That certainly wouldn't rule out that scenario. So whenever we see a clipper system along with a pretty significant jet stream dip, it's always something to keep an eye on, even if the computer models aren't necessarily bringing anything solidable when it comes to a major snowstorm um, because now between now and seven days a lot could change so i'll keep you guys updated if we were to see any significant um changes with the forecast but at least keep an eye on this clipper system because i definitely wouldn't rule out maybe that scenario where this um this low pressure system becomes a more significant snowstorm than we originally anticipated and then moving on into the even more long-term future there could be a few other clipper systems that could bring snowfall but at this point it becomes an educated um i'll say even less an educated guess when it comes to what the computer models are stating so take this with a huge grain of salt but for this snowstorm that could happen anywhere between the 6th and 7th, just keep an eye on this one because, again, I do believe that there might be that possibility. So in terms of what the European model is forecasting when it comes to this next major interior northeast snowstorm that could happen anywhere between Sunday to Monday, we do see that the European model expects this not only to dump over six inches of snow, but potentially over a foot of snow over a large area of Maine, extending into New Hampshire and Vermont and portions of upstate New York as well. So there's definitely something you need to prepare um, for at this point, especially if you're in the higher elevations of the interior northeast. While I'm not saying it'll snow this much because the GFS model is still in a pretty big disagreement regarding um, the amount, the exact amount of snowfall accumulation um, you should expect because the GFS model is forecasting the snowfall to be, well, um, most of the snowfall to be just north of the United States border. But for the European model scenario, this would be a very significant snowstorm. And I'll say we wouldn't get a better idea of what's going to happen until probably tomorrow and into Saturday. And, um, so at least stay tuned for the forecast right up along the interior northeast because this could potentially be a huge snowstorm where you could see over a foot of snow, especially in the even in the more populated areas right up, up along coastal Maine like Portland, you could maybe see anywhere between um, 12 to 18 inches of snow. So let me keep tabs on this storm system over the next few days. So although this northeast snowstorm isn't very far out into the future, 
the forecast is still relatively uncertain because the GFS model is still in a pretty big disagreement regarding where the heaviest snow will fall. The GFS model for the Sunday to Monday snowstorm expects the heaviest snow to fall well to the, um well further to the north. And in this scenario, um the coastal north um the coastal portions of Maine only experience around an inch of snow to even less than that, which is a pretty huge difference when it comes to the snowfall accumulation forecast because we have the European model right around Portland, Maine, expect, expecting around 12 to 18 inches of snow, while the GFS model is expecting no snowfall at all. So this is why the forecast is still very uncertain. We're going to need to see which of these two computer models will cave into the other one because that will definitely raise the certainty of this forecast. But what I could say for certain is that the portions of the Adirondacks and the extreme northern portions of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine should at least should experience a significant snowstorm it just becomes a little bit more uncertain just uh, south of those areas so definitely um keep tabs on this storm system um over the next few days so this is another thing i want to show you guys so this is the north atlantic oscillation index and right now we're slightly in a negative north atlantic oscillation and we do see that for much of the early to mid part of December, we're expecting to stay in negative North Atlantic oscillation. So this could mean that the Northeast will experience quarter than average temperatures for the beginning of December. And um, what that means is that, of course, the possibility of a snowstorm for the eastern half of the United States is a lot higher because during a negative North Atlantic oscillation, we see much more jet stream dips and um, a much stronger northerly flow to allow that cold air to move further southward to not only make the temperatures cold enough for snowfall, but to enhance the instability for a new snowstorm to potentially develop. So over the next two weeks, you definitely want to keep a close eye on the winter weather over the eastern half um, for that possibility of snowfall with what likely will be a colder than average um, temperature um, range um, for the early part of December. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.